Hello everyone, welcome back to KXAN Live. I'm your anchor, Esmeralda Zamora, and today we have The Space Space with Eric Henriksen. Eric, thanks so much for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. We had a great topic to talk about. I think it's really exciting and, and just something a little different. Yeah, yeah, when you sent me over the topic, I was a little jealous. I want this to be me. <laughs> right, yeah, same. And it's it's not as complicated as you think. <laughs> <laughs> but it is long term. It takes longer to get this title than you would expect. So it's it's an interesting, interesting thing we're chatting about today. We're chatting about a UT professor got an asteroid named after him. His name is Maruthia Kella, and his asteroid is located in the asteroid belt uh, in our solar system. So mm-hmm. it's outside between Mars and Jupiter, and it's one of the many asteroids out there. There's quite a few of them, and I got to chat with him about the honor he felt getting this this recognition, how rare it is to get this recognition. It was really fascinating. Uh, here, uh, we'll show his reaction to uh, just finding out about it. It's not my asteroid. I don't own it. Uh, it is uh, It is just part of, you know, our entire solar system. Um, uh, it is wild. Uh, you know, obviously, it's now been a few weeks, and I guess it's still kind of in the process of sinking in. So here is where we can look at it. I'm going to show it to you. This white line, it's very small, right in the center of your screen. We're going to get a closer view. There you <laughs> go. Closer view of it. This white line on the outside now, that is where his asteroid is located. So Mars is the red one, Earth's the blue, Venus, Mercury, Sun's in the middle, Jupiter is this yellow line out here. So this white line, so it orbits the Sun, just like everything else in our solar system, that asteroid belt that's in this orbital period. You know, they get pulled in by gravity and they kind of speed past and they flip, rotate around the whole solar system. It takes a few years, I think it's three years, nine months is what he told me, for this asteroid to make it around one of these orbits, you know, compared to those three times as long as our orbit. Uh, It's a small rock. It was discovered in the 1990s by two Japanese astronomers. They did not name it. And what happens is when you discover an object in space, I learned a lot about how things are named during this interview process. (laughs) Uh, When you discover an object in space, you get the first right to nominate somebody to have an object named after you. Wow. You don't necessarily get it named directly after you get to nominate someone. These astronauts, or astronauts, these astronomers decided, eh, well, you don't, no, we'll do it later. So that was <laughs> 1990, it's 2024 now, and now Maruthia Kella has an asteroid named after him, the Maruthia Kella. What's fascinating about this, which I didn't know, so I'm going to reveal things that I didn't know. This is, this is fun, we get to discover together. Things do not get named, asteroids do not get named after people that have the possibility of hitting the planet. What? Yeah, this right. This is wild to me. <laughs> I mean, I hope not. <laughs> so, any asteroid that has, I think he told me it was like a hundred thousand kilometers on at least, but it's things that are maybe distant enough in an inner asteroid belt far out there. Uh, they are what we name after people, and to do that, it's a nomination process. So, someone has to nominate you. He was nominated by a fellow in his field. He's an engineer and a, a fellow who also, I believe, that man also had an asteroid named after him, if I, if I recall correctly. He nominated him, and it goes through this process, and they tell people why uh, this individual is nominated, and then this uh, international group that names bodies in space picks the names and who gets named after. So he got this asteroid named after him. But yeah, nothing that's going to hit us. You're not going to be hit by the asteroid Eric Hendrickson. It's not going to (laughs) happen. I'd love a nomination. If anyone wants to throw that out there for me, that'd be a great birthday present. Uh, At the very least, hopefully it'll win. That'd be cool, too. But... (laughs) Uh, yeah, isn't it interesting? I didn't realize like that you're not going to have an asteroid hit us that's going to be named after someone. It's going to be named like CX9178, some random number, uh, some sort of thing. And we talked a lot about what, how many things are actually named in our solar system. And here's what he had to say about that. Today, there are about uh, 1.4 million identified objects that are be, that are part of the catalog of uh, you know all all minor planets and asteroids out there, and uh, less than about 25,000 of them are named. And of course, you know it takes a lot of time to name everyone, also, right? Every one of them, and they are you know obviously uh, they are being discovered as we speak, so the list is getting longer. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nomination process. We have to name things. This international group names them. So let me tell you a little bit about Professor Arkella. He teaches at the University of Texas. He has PhD students. He has, I think, 20 PhD st- students at this time. And he also is responsible for helping figure out guidance on our spacecraft that are heading to the moon. So you remember we had a lunar lander that reached the moon for the first time in decades a few months ago. 
he was responsible for the guidance. Now, he pointed out guidance and navigation are not the same thing. <laughs> guidance is telling it calculations to make uh, last minute, how to get it to these locations, how to land it on the spot, and navigations go to the moon. So he handles guidance. Totally He's different. very particular about this. Guidance is very different than navigation. So he helped design the system that handled that, handled that on that mission. He's handling the guidance on the next mission that's going there. And that one, he said, was really cool because you remember a few years ago we had a helicopter on Mars? Yes. So we were able to put a helicopter on Mars because there's a very thin atmosphere. There's, so there's something for it to interact with. The moon does not have an atmosphere. It's empty space. So they developed a hopper that's going to like jump up in the jump air, around. move a little bit, land. It'll go a few meters and hundreds of meters, then miles and whatnot. So it's, it's, the, it's the Hubble transport things mm-hmm. on the moon long distance. Helicopter, not as efficient, no atmosphere for it to work off of. So hopper is what we're going to do. And even if you watch like a little video of astronauts walking on the surface of the moon, they jump. So this is what they're doing. He's helping design the guidance system for that. So really cool. He was really appreciative of this naming and what it meant for him personally. I mean, he was very emotional when we spoke. You saw a little bit of it there in those, in those two sound bites we put on for you. But yeah, fascinating guy. Super excited about this this Super process. Cool. You it, can it nominate... is a cosmic milestone for sure. Truly, truly cosmic <laughs> milestone. And we have an, an object that's named. It's named after a professor at the University of Texas. Mm-hmm. And he teaches at the Cockrell School of Engineering. He teaches PhD students there. And also he's playing a role in our return to the moon. So he has a big role in the space industry. And he's, he's very insistent. He's part of a team. His parents, he was very thankful to, for them, for putting him through, the, you know, through school and helping him get to where he's at. His family, he was just... So super fascinating guy. Very happy for him. Very cool. Anyone can be nominated for this. So you doesn't can, it, have to be a scientist. Right. You just have to write something up. Actually, when we were talking, I was like, oh, I know who I would nominate if I nominate someone. I, I had someone in mind <laughs> that popped up. Uh, my grandfather, who actually worked at NASA in the 60s. I was like, oh, he'd be actually a great person to nominate. Uh, I wonder how hard that process really is, how much paperwork there is, what, what not is there a fee, that kind of thing. That would be so, an awesome Christmas gift. I know, right? That'd be pretty good. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, but my mom, I think, would be appreciative of it. Yeah. Don't let her, she won't see this. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell her about this this particular <laughs> interview. We'll keep this one between us, you and you, all, all us and the audience here. <laughs> my mom doesn't have to see this one this week. So, don't tell her. Sh- don't tell don't, her. No one told my mom. But uh, just in case, who knows? It could take a few years. Uh, I think this one does take a, a little bit of a process. Process. Because there is, it is a slow process. There's so many objects, and there's so many names that get submitted, and they do take effort to review those names so that mm-hmm. we don't have some random, you know, dictator <laughs> or something that pops up with an asteroid named after him. I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's like some stop gaps in there to prevent something horrific happening to a name. So yeah, pretty cool, and I'm really happy for for Professor Akella. He, he was. A very, very sweet man. And uh, we have a lot of photos, and we're going we're to show more on kxane.com, so you'll be able to check those out. Yeah. So just like you mentioned, if you're interested in reading more on this cosmic milestone, visit our website, kxane.com, and you can find that probably on the homepage. Yeah. Well, hope it, I hope it's still on the homepage. Yeah. It better be. It better be. If it's not, I'm going to push it back on our homepage. Yeah. I have the power. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me, Eric. Absolutely. Thank we'll you so much for having me. We'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. Thank you.